I'm Fabio and I'm here with Sean and Natalie from QCWare. And I'm going to be telling you about how QCWare's Forge platform delivers performance to our customers. So Forge is a quantum computing software platform. And the main focus of Forge is on delivering the best quantum algorithms targeting specific problems. So even though quantum algorithms are the main focus, we also bundle hardware access to deliver a better user experience. So we've built Forge with two types of users in mind. The first are the expert users. So those are the users who are already familiar with quantum computing and may want to write and simulate their own quantum circuits. So for those users, Forge provides basic circuit editing functionality, as well as GPU accelerated simulation and the ability to import circuits directly from Qiskit and Circ. The other type of users that we've built Forge for are what we call new users. So those are users who aren't really familiar with quantum computing, but still have use cases that may benefit from uh, using quantum algorithms. So for those users, Forge provides easy to use turnkey algorithm implementations, and all of those algorithms are backed by unique algorithms we've developed here at QCWare. And everything is delivered through a hosted Jupyter notebook on the web. This is actually a snapshot of what Forge looks like. Uh, you'll see this more closely when Sean and Natalie give the demos later. These are the backends that we currently have available uh, that you can access through Forge. Uh, for quantum annealers, we have uh, both D-Wave's Advantage machine, that's the newer machine with over 5,000 qubits, as well as a 2,000 qubit machine. For circuit model hardware, we provide access to IonQ's Ion Trap, as well as Rigetti's superconducting device through the Amazon Bracket platform. We'll soon enable access to lots of IBM backends as well. Uh, and like I mentioned, we ha also have CPU and GPU simulators available. This is the high-level architecture of Forge. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the main focus is on the quantum algorithms portion, as well as the essentially performance boosts or add-ons that we, that we develop internally for each of those algorithms. So we'll see more closely the binary optimization functionality as well as the machine learning functionality. Um, and we'll soon release Monte Carlo functionality in the next major release, essentially. Um, these algorithms are often delivered either directly or through some custom solvers that we also built targeting specific problems. A lot of this functionality is built using some common middleware that we've developed internally that just makes essentially connecting to the different platforms as well as hardware backends more straightforward for us. So now I want to dive in a little bit into the individual libraries and we're going to start with the quantum machine learning library. So our quantum machine learning algorithms are built using our quantum distance estimation algorithm. So distance estimation is really at the core of a lot of machine learning algorithms. So speeding that up using a quantum computer um, essentially allows us to speed up a collection of different uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, so what we've developed is a way to do distance estimation on a quantum computer that uh, is actually logarithmic in the dimensionality of the vectors. In addition to do machine learning, we need access to the data. And if you're doing quantum algorithms, you need quantum access to classical data. That's, that's going to require users to load the classical data onto a quantum computer. So in, you know, a lot of you who are familiar with this may have already he heard of the QRAM problem. So what we've developed is a set of de data loaders that provides a flexible way to load classical data on a quantum computer. So now I'm going to introduce Sean Weinberg, a quantum engineer at QCWare, and he's going to be demoing this machine learning functionality. Specifically, what we're going to see is our QNIR centroid, our QNIR neighbors, and our K-means algorithm, essentially with a side-by-side -side comparison between our library and scikit-learns. And all of those algorithms are backed by our distance estimation and loader functionality. So go ahead, Sean. Hi, I'm Sean Weinberg a quantum engineer and a researcher at QCWare. I'm going to show you how we can use Forge to implement quantum machine learning applications. As a first step, I'm going to generate some data. With this code, I generate 40 data points, each one of which has two dimensions. Now I'm going to use our quantum nearest centroid classifier. This is a supervised learning algorithm. 
take a look at the results. On top, we have the quantum algorithms results, and on the bottom, we have a comparable classical clustering algorithm. They look very similar. Next, we're going to do a nearest neighbor classification. Now, while this runs, I just want to emphasize that a lot of important things happen under the hood. There's the quantum distance estimation, as well as the algorithm that Fabio told you about for loading classical data into the uh, quantum circuit, our loaders. So looking again, we see that the classical and quantum clusters look very similar. Finally, let's do an unsupervised learning example. We can use our uh, quantum algorithm called Q-means. This is a quantum version of the classical algorithm K-means that you may be familiar with. Um, and uh, uh, because this is unsupervised learning, there's no labels on the data points. So the clustering is um, done uh, without labels. And again, the results look very similar. The thing that I want you to take home from this demo is that a lot of the tools that we've built with Forge allow, suppose that you have training in, in uh, classical data science, you can use that training and just basically use Forge exactly like you would use a tool like Scikit-Learn. And it's that way it's very easy to get your foot into the door on such an esoteric subject like quantum machine learning. Okay, uh, back to Fabio now, thanks. Thanks, Sean. So as you saw, it's pretty straightforward to use uh, the quantum machine learning algorithms we've built, and they really directly do compare with the functionality that a lot of you are already familiar from scikit-learn. So now I want to uh, move on to the binary optimization library. So one way to solve optimization problems using quantum computers is making use of quantum annealers. So quantum annealers essentially uh, provide a heuristic way to solve specific optimization problems. And uh, as is the case with lots of heuristics, they, they can kind of vary in the quality of the solution. And what we've developed is essentially a way to tune certain anneal annealing parameters on DOA's device that actually make, improves the outcome of quantum annealing. So this is actually an example of what I mean. So what we're, what we're plotting here is essentially the total count of good solutions for a specific optimization problem that we chose. Of course, more good solutions is a good thing, and we're comparing the same number of runs side by side. Um, so on, on, on one of the bars, we see kind of D-Wave with standard parameters, and the other one is, you know, quantum annealing on wave, but augmented using QCWare's anneal offsets algorithm. For the smaller problem, which is actually easier, our, our algorithm actually does underperform, but you can see that as the problem scales and becomes harder to solve, uh, the anneal offsets algorithm developed by QCWare delivers a much higher count of good solutions. So now I want to introduce Natalie Parham, also a quantum engineer at QCWare, who's going to give you a demonstration of this functionality. Specifically, we'll see D-Wave with standard settings side by side with QCWare's anneal offset algorithm. Go ahead, Natalie. Thanks, Fabio. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalie, and I'm also a quantum engineer at QCWare, where I research and develop quantum algorithms. OK, so in this notebook, I'm going to be showing Forge's advanced functionality on D-Wave machines. So uh, you can see right here, I've defined the Q matrix, which specifies the optimization problem that we would like to solve. And this problem is defined on 100 qubits. So D-Wave allows its users to specify a variety of different parameters when, when running a quantum anneal. And when we talk about standard quantum annealing, what we mean by that is the default parameters that D-Wave sets when the user doesn't specify any. And here at QCWare, we've developed a heuristic that often determines better parameters compared to standard quantum annealing in terms of getting a better probability of success. And in this notebook, I'll be comparing the two. So in the cell that I just started running, I am running standard quantum annealing on D-Wave's 2000Q machine. And you can see that we get a probability of success of 7.3%. Um, now I'm running uh, the QCWare's enhanced version of quantum annealing in this bottom cell, and we get a success probability of 13%. So that's almost two times as good as before. And I want to emphasize here that in order to do this last call through QCWare, we only had to specify a single parameter, uh, really making it simple for users to take advantage of advanced specifications on the D-Wave machines. That's all for 
uh, quantum annealing. Back to you, Fabio. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie. So as you can see, not only is it easy to use uh, our anneal offsets algorithm, but also it, it for certain problems, it can really improve the success probability on D-Wave. Uh, so now I want to talk about another way of solving optimization problems on quantum computers, and that's using essentially circuit model devices. So one promising algorithm for near-term quantum computers is the quantum approximate optimization algorithm. And for those of you that are familiar with the QAOA, uh, you also know that you actually need to tune certain parameters or angles to get good solutions. And that can take quite a bit of time. So what we've also developed at QCWare is an algorithm that can find the optimal angles for the QAOA, specifically for uh, the short QAOA circuits, for those of you who are familiar. Uh, and it does so in also a fraction of the time. So now Natalie is going to demo this functionality again. So specifically what we're going to see is the calculation of the QAOA angles using default settings, as well as the QCWare's angle calculation. Go ahead, Natalie. Thanks, Fabio. So as he said, this notebook is about finding the optimal parameters for the QAOA. For those of you who aren't familiar with the QAOA, it's a gate-based quantum optimization algorithm. And it's become very popular in recent years. So here we've defined the optimization problem again, and this time it's only specified on four qubits. So um, the performance of the QAOA heavily relies on whether or not you pick uh, parameters that are good. So what I just started running is the typical approach for evaluating the performance of different parameters. And as you can see, it's taking kind of a while considering that this problem is only specified on four qubits. So when this completes, we're going to see a nice heat map. And so here's the heat map. And we can interpret this heat map as the blue spots correspond to parameters that lead to good solutions, and the red spots correspond to bad solutions. And what I want to emphasize here is the complexity of this heat map and that there's some good spots near bad spots. So if, if, you, if you're a little bit off from good parameters, you might end up getting a bad solution. So I really want to emphasize here the complexity and importance of getting the right parameters in QAOA. And uh, lastly, this algorithm took tw over 22 seconds, which for only four qubits, as I said, is problematic. So here at QCWare, we've developed an algorithm that calculates the exact same thing as above, but in a fraction of the time. So as you can see, this took less than two and a half seconds, which is a significant uh, improvement from over 20 seconds. And we got the same exact results. And for the imp uh, considering how important it is to find the optimal parameters, being able to do this calculation in a fraction of the time reduces the overall overhead of this algorithm significantly. And that's all. Fabio? Thanks again, Natalie. So as you can see, using our algorithm is extremely straightforward. I also want to emphasize that tuning these QAOA parameters is really important to get those to, to get solutions that are better than better than alternative algorithms using uh, the QAOA. Um, and doing that much faster really improves the time to solution. So the last thing I want to talk about are the expert tools. So specifically, those are the circuit editing and simulation tools that I mentioned earlier. So here's a snapshot of what that looks like. For those of you who are familiar, it's probably really similar to other open source libraries you've used to uh, do circuit editing and simulation. Uh, we provide essentially the standard functionality, including state vector simulation, uh, si you know, getting measurements, uh, as well as computing the expectation value of poly operators and the gradient of the expectation value of those operators with respect to parameters in your circuit. Uh, another functionality we provide is the ability to directly import circuits from Qiskit and Circ. And what I want to show you now is uh, essentially the GPU simulation functionality that we make available through Forge. Um, so of course, lots of other open source libraries also provide uh, essentially GPU simulation tools. But what Forge does is that it provisions the GPU for you, which makes it really easy to uh, essentially use the sped, up the sped up simulation using a GPU. So specifically what Sean's gonna demo to you is a circuit, uh, a Qiskit circuit running locally on his device, 
and then side by side with the uh, with the circuit imported into Forge and r- running on our provision GPU. Uh, go ahead, Sean. Okay, so unlike the other demos you've seen, this notebook that you see here actually just runs on my personal laptop. So I have some code that I wrote in Qiskit. I used it to make a circuit with 20 qubits and 984 gates. That's pretty non-trivial. And um, I then simulated it on my computer. And as you see, it took 32 seconds. Just for your reference, this is running on a MacBook Pro. So I want to show you how easy it is to take code that you wrote in Qiskit like this, copy and paste it into Forge, import it into Forge, and take advantage of Forge's provision GPU. So here's Forge. And as you see, this line of code here tells Forge that we want to use the GPU simulator. Then, as I advertised, I just copied and pasted the code from that other notebook into Forge. And then right here, this line, um, this one line here, is for importing the code, importing the Qiskit circuit into Forge. 20 qubits, 984 gates, just like before. So let's simulate it on the GPU. Okay, took about three and a half seconds. It's about a 10x speed up. The point here, the real thing to to, um, notice is that you don't have to go to the work of provisioning a GPU, um, learning how to write CUDA code, et cetera. You can just take advantage of of the ability to take that code that you wrote in Qiskit, copy and paste it into Forge, um, import it, and easily run it on the GPU, just like you run a, a, a local simulation on your computer. Okay, thanks. Back to Fabio. Thanks again, Sean. So as you saw, it's extremely easy to uh, use GPUs to simulate circuits using Forge. Everything's provisioned for you, easy to use. Um, So that's it for our demos today. Uh, I also want to point out that anyone can sign up for a trial at forge.qcware.com. The trial account gives you enough time to test out all these features, and we encourage you to do so, as well as uh, if anyone has feedback, please do reach out to us, feature requests and so on. We're always happy to to hear what uh, the community wants to see and what they think about these features already. Um, That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Also, thanks again to Sean and Natalie for the demos.